Hi everyone. Today I want to show you some Mesh Lab things. So Mesh Lab is a program that we can use to edit and manipulate meshes. And this is the screen that you'll see when you first open up Mesh Lab. You'll see a trackball in the center. So Mesh Lab operates on a trackball navigation system where you are moving around in your scene using a trackball and you can rotate um, 360 degrees in all directions around your scene. So I'm going to start by opening up a mesh. So I'm going to click on this button, which is the import mesh button. And I'm just going to start by opening up this humerus. It's the humerus of a varamid lizard. So when I open it up, you'll see that Mesh Lab automatically orients the center of your mesh into the center of the trackball. And I'm just clicking and dragging and manipulating around within the scene. I can use the mouse scrolly wheel to zoom in and out. And I can hold in the mouse wheel and drag to pan around the scene. You'll notice that the, this is moving the mesh around and out of the center of the trackball. And there are a few pieces of information that we can already see when we load in a mesh. So if we look down here in the red bar, you'll see the name of the mesh that we have selected. And we'll see how many vertices and faces it's made up of. So this mesh is about 178,000 faces, which is relatively small. And when you open up a mesh, you'll see this panel open up. This is the layering panel. So if, if you ever need to bring this up, that's this button here. And when you open up multiple meshes, you'll see them appear down the side here. One other thing that you want to know is that you can hold down shift and scroll, to change the perspective. If I want to make it more fish-eyed, I'm going to zoom in to make it more orthogonal, we zoom out. And you'll see these values down here change. FOV stands for field of view. And then FPS down here stands for frames per second. And that's just a number that tells you how well your computer is handling um, the mesh. You can change the lighting of this scene by holding in control and shift and then clicking and dragging. And this will change the direction that the light is pointing. And this can be quite a powerful tool for creating figures because you can bring out certain details of your mesh that you might not otherwise be able to see. Another thing that you can do with this mesh is to take measurements from it. So to do this, you use this little tape measure tool up the top here, click it, and you'll go into measuring mode. So you can no longer manipulate this mesh using your mouse, but what you can do is click on a point. So say I want to measure it from end to end, I'll click on this end and draw a line to the other end, and that will give me a measurement here. It also comes up down in this little panel here, so now you'll notice the trackballs reappeared, so that means that I've exited measuring mode and I can now manipulate the mesh. And I can see the exact points that I'm measuring between. If you want to be a little bit more specific with your measuring tool, you can use the escape key to enter and exit out of manipulation mode. So let's click the measuring tool again. And this time I can hit escape and the trackball will come back up. I'm still in measuring mode, but this allows me to spin it around. If I hit escape again, you'll see the trackball disappear. I can hit the point that I want here. And then I hit escape again. And now I can manipulate find the other point that I want, hit escape, and then click the second point 
And this allows me to just be a little bit more precise with the points that I want to measure between. So I can also use this little button up here to exit and enter out of manipulation and measuring mode. So I've finished measuring now, so I'm just going to hit the measuring tool and it's going to go back into my original window. You can see my measurements are still down here recorded, so that's pretty convenient for me. One of the other things that you may want to do with this mesh is decimate it. So I can view the triangles that make up this mesh by hitting this button up here. So this is just showing me the triangles or polygons that make up this mesh file. I can reduce the size of this by decimating it. So basically just reducing the number of polygons that make up the mesh. And to do this, I go into filters, remeshing, simplification and reconstruction. And then what I want is the Simplification Quadric Edge Collapse Decimation tool. So I'm going to click this. By default, it's going to put the target number of faces to be half of what's already there. You can also put in a number, a percentage, um, and you can tick a bunch of these options. So um, about half, we'll see how that goes. If I click Apply, you'll see that the number of polygons is going to change and how big they are. So now I've got about half the number of polygons making up this mesh and you can see this reflected down the bottom here. So now I've only got 89,000 faces making up my mesh. So now if I export this file, it's going to be much smaller. Now to export this new file that we have, we can just make sure it's selected in the layer panel here and then go File, Export Mesh As. Um, we can choose the format. I usually use either Ply, SCL or OBJ. OBJ is something that I use pretty frequently, um, especially for Sketchfab. And I just add a little something to the file name to tell me how it's different from the others. So I'm going to say that I decimated it and that it is now 89,000 faces. I'm going to hit save and OK. And that's just going to write a new mesh file that has about half the number of polygons as the original mesh file. One thing that I will add is that once you know the name of a function that you use quite often, you can just use the search bar rather than going through all of these sub menus and trying to find it. You can click on the little magnifying glass here and say I wanted to simplify my mesh. I can type in simplification and it will come up with the options. So this was the one that I used before. So I find this search bar to be quite a useful tool. So now I want to show you how to work with multiple meshes. So I'm actually going to get rid of this uh, mesh that I already have. So I'm just going to right click and then delete current mesh. I'm going to click the open or the import mesh button again. Um, and this time I'm going to select, I'm going to hit control and I'm going to select multiple meshes and I want to open them all up at once. And these meshes have all been made from the same 3D volume, so they should open up all oriented nicely relative to one another. So here you can see we've got a whole forearm with a humerus, radius and ulna, carpals and then the digits. And you can see that these meshes have come up in my layering panel at the side here, so I can select and edit any one of these meshes individually. So I want to show you how to add colour to these meshes. To 
to add color, I'm going to select one of my meshes. So let's say the humorous. I'm going to go here into filters, color creation and processing. And then the one that I want is vertex color colorization. Again, we can bring this up by using the magnifying glass we know what our function is called. Vertex color. There it is. And this brings up a little dialog box here. So I can basically use these sliders to pick a color. So I'm just going to click this little preview box because that means that as I change the sliders, the color of the mesh is going to be previewed here before I hit apply. So this basically, hue basically changes um, the actual color. Saturation will change just how colored the mesh is. And then luminance will make it brighter. Blending will blend your chosen color with your, the color of the original mesh, which is like a light gray color. So for this mesh, I already know what color I want it to be. I have it recorded here in a spreadsheet. So because I am uh, using the same colouring system for multiple models, I have recorded the values that I want to use. So for the humorous, I want it to be 231 hue, 70 saturation and 50 luminance. So So I'm just going to change these values here. I always put blending at 100 just because I want the new color to be purely my new color. So that's a nice dark blue color. And then I can hit apply and that will apply that color to that mesh. If I want to color the next mesh. Let's say I want to do the ulna next. All I do is come up here to my layers, hit the ulna it's going to make it blue because that, that, those are the values that are already in the boxes. But again, I can just enter in the values that I want. So I'm going to go back and check my spreadsheet. So for Alna, I want 200, 30 and 60. And I'm going to enter them in here. It can take a while for the previewer to catch up when you enter the numbers in. But you'll see now the ulna is a nice light blue color and I can hit apply. So I will do this for all of the meshes that I want to color. So I've just paused the recording while I've gone ahead and colored my meshes. So you can see they're all colored. So I'm going to exit out of this now. So now my forelimb is nicely colored. There's one extra step that we need to take to make sure that when we export these meshes um, that whatever software we use next knows how to read the texture or the color on these, on these meshes. So what we need to do, select our first mesh, go filters, texture, and then per vertex texture function. So then this little dialog box is going to come up. So all I need to do is make sure that my mesh is selected and hit apply. Select the next mesh, hit apply. And do that for all of the meshes that are in your model. So once I've done that, I'm going to exit out and then export my new colored OBJs. I just want to show you the difference between exporting one with and without color now that we've texturized them. So I'm just going to hit the first one here, the carpals, which are the wrist bones. I'm going to export mesh as. I want it to be an OBJ. So I'm just going to add something to the file name to tell me what I did to it. So I colored it going to hit save 
And now you notice there's a couple of extra checkboxes coming up here. So we've got one for vertex color and also our texture chords. And the texture chords is the main one that we want to see come up um, because this is going to tell whatever software that we use next how to read those colors in. So now we hit OK. And we can check that it's worked by going into our file location. So this is where I've saved all of the files. And for this file that I just saved, there's an extra file here called a material file. And that's just going to tell uh, other software how to um, apply colors to the vertices. So we can do that for all of our meshes here and have a separate OBJ for each one. Another thing that we can do is merge all of these meshes and save an individual OBJ with these colors on it. And to do this, we make sure they're all visible firstly. We can change the visibility of different meshes um, by clicking on the little eyeball here and flicking them on and off. Make sure all the ones that you want are visible. Then we're going to right click on one of them and hit flatten visible layers. So this is just going to give you a few options here. Merge only visible layers. It's going to delete the ones that you can't see. You don't want this um, because if you've done any editing, there might still be vertices floating around here, which you won't want and then hit apply. So this might just take a few seconds. So now you can see that we've got one mesh, which we can now um, apply the texture to. Make sure you apply the texture again, because you'll need a new material file for this. So just apply it again. And then you can go through the same exporting process for this new merged mesh but it will now have all of your OBJs combined into a single colored OBJ. Now, if we want to upload this model to Sketchfab, we can either upload the merged mesh as a single OBJ, or we can upload multiple colored OBJs. And I'll just show you the types of files you need to zip up if you want to do this. So I've already saved them here. So this is, um, this is just where I've been saving files for the tutorial, but if I go up a level, you'll see that I have saved some files for Sketchfab here. So if I open it, I can see that each mesh, I've got a materials file, and that's pretty much all you need. The only other thing you'll need is this Sketchfab ZBrush file. It's basically just an empty notepad file that has this particular name. And this tells Sketchfab that there are multiple OBJs that make up this model. Otherwise, Sketchfab will just take the first OBJ in the series and think that that's your model. So once you have your OBJs, your material files, and your ZBrush file all in the same folder, you can zip that up. And then all you need to do is upload that particular zip file to Sketchfab. So if you do that, you'll get something that looks like this. I've added the background here, but basically all I did was just uploaded that zip file directly from my computer to Sketchfab. And it will already have the colors that I've applied in MeshLab pre-built into the file. So that's the basic workflow for getting a coloured full limb um, through MeshLab and into Sketchfab.